What's going on, everybody? Tesla Semi Truck is one of the best products out here on the market, and we're just going to go over a couple of products and some new updates for Tesla. So let's get activated. It's electric. Shout out to Tesla Car World because this is who we're using. Let's get it. Many Tesla Semis being produced by the end of the year that Elon has also confirmed a crazy announcement about this electric truck to prove that this is going to be the best Class 8 truck on the planet. During this time, Tesla has added a much needed feature to the big rig that no other truck on the market has. The latest customers of the Semi have also announced its incredibly impressive performance after only a short time of operation. If everything goes according to plan, there will be at least 1,000 Semis by the end of this year before the new Tesla Semi factory is completed. See, now this is what i'm talking about guys why everybody else is always tracking the market and trump getting elected and the stock going up because somebody said this look we're going to look at the bottom line the bottom line is look at this factory this factory is being produced this extension in nevada and then this is going to provide in a property or facility for the tesla semi to be produced now a thousand that's going to be ridiculous but again this is a different product a different service that tesla has and this is going to make massive amounts of effect and change the market across the board especially when it comes down to the freight business but anyways let's get into it keep diving in now long haul is definitely going to be different when you're having an electric car and as the guy said i'm not saying this this is coming from the drivers, the truck drivers who are saying this is a fantastic car, it's effective and efficient, and we covered that story before. Let's go back into it, but again, let's look at the products instead of looking at the news. By the end of next year, and here are the latest updates on semi trucks. All right, everybody, welcome to another installment of Tesla Car World, and thanks for being with us. Earlier this year, we reported that Tesla was behind schedule in semi-production, having only built about 140 units so far. About 100 of these were being used by Tesla themselves, and only 36 got delivered, leading many to believe that the semi would soon get discontinued due to the immense effort required from Tesla. However, it has not been abandoned as we thought. On the contrary, as the year progresses, Tesla's been ramping up and focusing more on the semi. It seems See, so people were kind of scared. They were wondering like, wow, there's only 36 that actually got issued outside of Tesla. And does that mean a lot of people are just not going to get it? Are they going to discontinue it? That's not the case. We're going to continue to move forward. Seems the manufacturer's goal is to fulfill orders for companies that have been waiting far too long without much feedback. Since early October, the number of Tesla semis has increased at an astonishing rate. And if Tesla picks up even more speed by the end of the year, we think that at some point next year, keeping count of them will no longer matter because there's just going to be too many. Specifically, in early October, videos captured by Henrik Zane, a drone operator in Nevada, showed a total of 38 brand new semis freshly produced. Just a few days later, an additional 53 semis were spotted outside the Nevada factory. So far, all semis have been produced from a small production line at Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada. However, the company is currently building a dedicated facility nearby that will focus solely on semi production. The facility See, solely on semi-production. This facility is going to pump out more vehicles, especially the semi. Now, a lot of people are worried because it gets delayed. Again, guys, just remember that this is a new technology. This is a new processing system. And then the factory and the facility is not easy not to build out and then also to scale and mass produce. So from prototype, from where you see it, and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be amazing. To the time that they actually deliver it, it's going to be a long time. And especially too, once you release that 36, and then you also have the other amount that are with Tesla, they have to put it in action. They have to see the weaknesses and issues. And then once those issues arise, then they can fix them by the time that they're going to produce the facility and then be mass production. That's not the time to figure the kinks out, right? But he's expected to get finished by the end of next year, and only after its completion will Tesla be able to reach its annual production target of 50,000 semis, as announced by Elon. Meanwhile, while waiting for the new factory, a significant number of semis are getting produced at the current facility. Around November 18th, Henrik Zane continued to report that he spotted at least 60 Tesla semis on both sides of the building. As a keen observer of Giga Nevada over time, he estimated that the total number of semis produced by Tesla had hit around 250 units. As the number of semis continues to rise, Elon made a pretty bold announcement about the electric truck. Specifically, Tesla CEO confirmed that the semi is going to get sold worldwide, allowing semi to make a significant impact on emissions in the transport sector across global markets. Oh my goodness. Before this, we simply thought that Tesla would just make more semis for the European market, especially since Elon had showcased it at Giga Berlin over the last few months. So we believe that the semi will soon make its way to Asia and Giga Shanghai is fully capable of making these electric trucks. Of course, we can confidently say that the versions outside North America are going to have some differences.
For example, in Europe, the regulations regarding trucks. Okay, we're going to dive in the difference between them once they go to different regions. But guys, once this is produced to places like Asia, it's going to be ridiculous. That's going to be a whole entirely different market. It's going to be an actual product that's effective and efficient and people are going to use it. The only people who are going to actually be competing with is BYD. BYD is the only competition. Outside of that, there is no competition. Sizes are very different from those in the U.S. and road space is also smaller. So the first factor Tesla needs to adjust is the truck size if they want to operate the semi on roads in this continent. The European version of the semi could also include a different front suspension setup, allowing Tesla to enhance its regenerative braking capabilities and adding a framework behind the cabin that would allow for a sleeping area, meaning that the cabin will be slightly bigger than the North American semi. However, this won't significantly impact the already impressive performance of the semi. It can still provide a range of 500 miles with a total payload of around 75,000 pounds, and in a non-loaded state, it could even exceed 600 miles. The uniqueness of the Tesla Semi is further demonstrated when it climbs hills, and customers will find this hard to overlook. Just look at the power of the Semi. It can ascend a 10% grade at 60 miles an hour even when fully loaded. No other heavy-duty truck in the world can do this when carrying a full load. For example... And then again, guys, this is what I always talk about. Just be a more effective and efficient, just the energy, right? The electricity is just different, all right, than the old diesel form. I mean, come on, it was invented so long ago. So it's not the rag on the diesel engine. This is just saying like it's evident, right? New technology is going to be created in the future. It's just going to be a little bit better or a lot better. And there's no need to get mad and sensitive about it. That's just what it is. Current heavy duty trucks when fully loaded often can only do 30 on the highway because they just can't go higher speeds. This makes drivers feel unsafe. In fact, drivers who've tested semi in the US say they don't want to go back to driving other trucks. They prefer the semi because it's just easier to drive and a lot smoother. Another benefit of the semi is its regenerative braking. Always got some advertisement. Yeah, regenerative braking, right? Actually having it a braking so you can just slow it down and regenerate. This is going to be a tremendous benefit versus diesel they don't have that potential now that's a big difference right diesel's not able to do that and this is why we need to focus on actually expanding this fleet and providing it for the rest of the transportation industry it's essential claims it can recover a lot of energy when going downhill now you might be skeptical about the impressive capabilities of the semi but there's new evidence regarding the efficiency of its 900 kilowatt battery pack and the unbelievable performance of the big rig recently dhl one of the bigger freight companies in the world which is actively looking for ways to reduce emissions shared the results of a two-week trial with a class a truck the company noted that the semi significantly exceeded initial expectations on its website the whoa why now these are people who actually utilize the truck not people online in the comment section that just hate tesla right you're going to have those people who are going to say something in this video you don't know what you're talking about you're stupid and they're going to put all their technicalities inside of the details and in the comments just shooting from the hip versus actual companies who are utilizing the vehicles putting them in the field and saying they're more effective and efficient damn the drivers who are giving it good compliments they're like they don't know no better i know more why? Because I twist doorknobs. Why? Because I work at Subway and I'm angry. Like, DHL posted initial results from its two-week testing phase with a semi, during which they drove the Class 8 electric truck for over 3,000 miles in Livermore, California on regular operation routes. Part of the testing included a 390-mile trip with the semi trucks fully loaded with a total weight of 75,000 pounds. DHL has confirmed that the electric truck's ability to haul DHL's typical loads over long distances can be done on just one charge. Now, as far as we know, the semi-long range variant has a base weight of 23,000 pounds. So in this case, it was carrying at least 52,000 pounds of payload, including the cargo. The max weight allowed for electric trucks is 82,000 pounds. But we don't think there's going to be many cases where that's the max, so 75,000 pounds is still pretty impressive. Not just that, DHL says that for more than half the time, the crew drove the semi, it averaged just 1.7 kilowatt hours a mile while traveling at speeds above 50 miles an hour. As the company notes, this far exceeds DHL's expectations as well as Tesla's own ratings for the semi. See, but nope, we don't believe it. We don't want to believe it. We're angry. We hate Tesla. And you know what? They're a liar. But even if it comes straight from DHL, it doesn't matter, right? We got DHL declares the Tesla Semi is ready for prime time. Let's go to another article that I had. Shout out to Chad GTP in Artificial Intelligence. You know, they're always hooking it up. But here we go. Yes, DHL Supply Chain USA tested a Tesla Semi electric truck over a two-week period in December of 2024. And the Tesla Semi performed well in the trial, exceeding expectations in energy consumption and range. The truck averaged 1.72 kilowatts per mile. And then while it was better than both the Tesla and DHL's expectations, the truck was able to travel 500 miles on a single charge as expected. And the truck was able to carry a typical DHL payload over a long distance on a single charge. 
Is this good or what? And the next steps, the DHL is considering how to integrate the Tesla Semi into its fleet. So that's a potential client. The client had a good review. And even still, this is what we're going to look for, right? We're still going to have people who hate. We're still going to have people who say that's not good enough. We're still going to have people who say, hey, you know what? I just dislike Tesla. And they're not going to actually come out and say that, but they're going to try to give it reasons like, oh man, no, because we don't know the specific and the technicalities and Elon delivered it late. And you know, he always is a liar, but here we go. These are the details that matter the most. On its website, Tesla states that the semi can achieve a driving efficiency of under two kilowatt hours of energy consumption per mile with a total range of three to 500 miles when fully loaded. Now, as we understand it, Tesla is working on adding an insane feature to its electric truck, which is especially important after the incident where a drowsy driver caused a semi to catch on fire. And that is FSD. Throughout this time, the semi has been continuously testing this feature as it was spotted undergoing trials and adjustments for fully autonomous driving with LiDAR equipment mounted on the roof. Now, you might be skeptical about this since Elon said he'd never used LiDAR, but in reality, LiDAR is used to facilitate and validate the camera system during training computations. It's not needed on the finished product. Simply put, LiDAR is just a support tool for the self-driving tests of all of Tesla's EVs. In our view, full self-driving is going to make Tesla semi a steal of the century. Pepsi not only bought 86 electric semis from Tesla, but these trucks have effectively replaced their diesel ones, helping them save on fuel and maintenance costs. Elon referred to it as a money-saving machine. In the near future, Pepsi will just need to update the software over the air, and suddenly you'll have over 100 self-driving electric semis, saving an additional sixty dollars to $70,000 a year for each truck since they won't need drivers anymore. They I mean, come on. I mean, just imagine it, right? The added value of actually purchasing a truck is ridiculous. Like not only does it actually reduce your expenses when it comes down to energy and maintenance, but also when it happens, the technology, which is over the actual air software, over the air software update, not one that you got to take it back to the actual manufacturer and get it reprogrammed, will add value and then reduce possibly 60 to 70,000 if it's fully autonomous. That's ridiculous, man. I mean, come on, who could beat that? It might only require an Optimus robot to load and unload the cargo. Ultimately, with FSD, the semi could truly be a different type of long haul truck. When if you're a native or fluent English speaking uh, I mean, Western that, that, Nobody cares what you're saying, lady. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's a massive amount of added value. That value that gets added after you have the car, after you already made the purchase, right? And so here we go. Here are some other details about the Tesla Semi. And the Tesla plans to start a large-scale production of the Semi in 2026. And that's what you've seen with the extension over there in Nevada. And then the truck can recover 70% of the range in 30 minutes using the Tesla Semi charger, which is different from just a regular charger network. And the truck's potential entry into the European market is pending compliance with the EU regulation. Man, once that is mapped out, it, it's a landslide from that point on. I mean, hopefully the UE, uh, what is it? The EU is just going to hate on us, right? They don't want us to bring the cars there because if we bring our cars there, it would just be a landslide. There'll be no competition. Actually, there is no competition because Tesla is the best. Again, as I always say, Elon for the win. I mean, this is ridiculous. Guys, just continue to track things like this. The production of the semi truck, the production of a mega factory that's being built out in Shanghai. Like these are the bottom lines that you need to follow, not the constant update on the stock and what's it going up and down 5%, 8%, 3%, 2%, 33% because of this and that and that. Like, no, I'm looking for the finer details. I'm looking for where the investment is being made in the company, right? The capital expenditure, where is the money being directed? And is that going to add value in the bottom line? That's what I'm going to track. And then I'm going to look for that, the fundamentals of the company, the stock and what it does, 8%, 3%, because people believe it's not butter. I, I mean, that's cool. That's nice. But net net, these are the things that we're going to track in order to keep steady and focused on the business. From good to great, that's where Tesla is going. So shout out to everybody. Again, this is not investment advice. So go and do your own due diligence. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys on the next one. Hit the notification bell so you can get this hot electricity. And as I always say, it's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. You can't conceive it.